February 18th, man, you return to action, Titan FC 74. You're facing, from what I heard, is Jason Russell, but that was not your original opponent. Could you explain the switch up? Yeah, so I was supposed to fight this dude, Jeremy, uh, bad combination Henry. Uh, he was a decent kickboxer, 12 and 1, 4 for an IKF uh, world title. Um, just had a couple recent amateur matches. I think he was 5 and 1 amateur, so he's had 20 fights experience, about 18 more fights than me. Uh, and then just talking online, tagging me, Facebook, Instagram, I don't pay attention to it. I just say, okay, I'll sign the contract and then, you know, we're going to fight. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm a bad matchup for him. And uh, according to his coaches and other people, he shouldn't be fighting me as his pro debut, which is obviously smart. I got to give them credit. But, you know, I don't sign a contract unless you're ready to execute it. Um, we're fighters, but this is business and entertainment. So, you know, I don't have much respect for that man. Uh, I had a late step in, Jason Russell, the Kansas City badass. I have a thing for nicknames, I guess, because I go by Richie Savage. But, but yeah, he's going to be my new opponent, and we have a new date on March 4th. Okay, March 4th. So, Titan FC. Which Titan FC would that be? That's going to be, I think it's seven, I think it's 74 or 72, the same exact one that it was. Uh, they just had issues with the venue. It used to be at the Miami Intercontinental downtown Brickell, and they're changing it to the higher Regency now. All right. So, it's... It's not as short notice as most people would think since the date has been moved to March uh, March 4th. Yeah, I'm, plus I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a year-long camp. That's my commitment this year. My coaches, uh, they're going to give me – they said they'll give me two months where I can have a little bit of time off. Still train, but have a little time off. But I promised them 10 months of full dedication in my life. So I'm kind of going to be doing an ongoing camp and, and going to be fight-ready, close to weight uh, for the next 10 months. So. All right, that sounds good, man. And, uh, you know, Russell steps in. What is your approach usually to, to get to know your opponents? Uh, so the first two, they were – one kid was from Miami. So a co couple of my buddies trained with him. Uh, he had a couple fights. He trained at Bushido Muay Thai, so I kind of knew his style. Um, he was a tough kid. He was a lot tougher than I expected. Watched – Maybe a little bit of film on him, but you know it's hard to find film on guys uh, at this level. And then uh, Ernesto Rodriguez, I actually sparred him. He came to my gym, wanted to train and join our team. And then uh, I kind of got the better of him in sparring. And the next thing you know, the kid wants to fight me. And he's at Street Couture. He was pretty good. He was 5-0 and as an amateur, 2-0 and as a pro. And this is only my second fight ever. You know, the dude's been training for four or five years. And uh, I watched the sparring, and I'm like, dude, not only are you not better than me, but... I have an extremely intelligent team that break down things like this for me. So they just tell me what to do and I just execute it. <laughs> and, and that's exactly how it went. Um, and for this next guy, we watched a couple of film, a couple, a little bit of film on him, but uh, yeah, I think this one's going to be one of my, one of my quicker ones, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he has a pretty you know, like you said, he has a pretty good nickname, so we'll see what he brings to the table, right? <laughs> he has a pretty good beard, too, and a little ponytail, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, he definitely got a couple bar fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, well, from the picture, it looks like it, right? <laughs> from the picture. Um, I believe your last fight, you broke your nose, but you still got the, the second round TKO finish, man. How was it battling through an injury to get that stoppage? Man, it was fucking awesome. I, I, I feel the fire, man. It's like... It's when I feel the most alive is in those moments of, of not triumph, but when you overcome an adversity that, not that I'm not sure if I can overcome, but when you face that depth of, of darkness and hardness and you're able to come out the other side um, in victory, uh, it's the best feeling that I've ever had in the entire world. Um, so it was a great feeling. And the other thing is, that I'm pissed about is that he broke my nose with a headbutt. So he threw overhand to, I got out the way and on his way back, he hit me in the head with a headbutt, uh, with, with about 37 seconds left in the first. Uh, I wish he would have done it with a punch. So then maybe, you know, it would have been worth it, but just to slip up like that, you know, but I say this in everyone I talk to, uh, the adversity that I face now is just building the base for, my future you know because any adversity that i face now i'm going to be better equipped to to deal with it in the future so uh, i look at these as 
is positive. Yeah, definitely, definitely building that base, man. You do have to go through some adversity, man, before you hit like the next level and then the next level and then the next level. Um, you know, you have a deep wrestling uh, background, probably the best base for MMA. Many people believe that. How has it been adding like the different aspects of martial arts to your foundation? So, man, I actually, for the past year, I didn't start, I, I haven't wrestled since I've gotten to Sanford. So I did about a 14 month block of training when I moved down to Miami. Um, I was at a go check academy originally and I didn't focus on no wrestling at all. I also had three years of experience with Jiu Jitsu with John Donahue, uh, coach training at Hendo Gracie Academy while I was still wrestling. So I knew I had the MMA grappling, the Jiu Jitsu and the wrestling. So this has just been all striking. And now after 14 months, man, I'm finally comfortable. I'm finally able to spar with UFC guys, you know, spar with the, the next level guys. Whereas before, you know, either I would throw too hard and be too wild or I wouldn't be able to keep up with my hand positioning. Guys would throw kicks and I wouldn't know when to have my hands up. I'm sorry, someone's calling me. I can't see you. All right, cool. So, yeah, so we focus on all, all technique. So staying sharp, staying clean, learning to put my hands after position, learning when to angle off, learning how to dip my head, learning how to move my feet in these positions, uh, and just focus purely on, on striking. Um, and now, since I moved to Sanford, obviously there's a lot higher level of kickboxing. It's one of the best, kick it's one of the best kickboxing gyms in the world one of the best MMA gyms in the world. Now we're starting to transition that back into that striking, into the MMA grappling, and the grappling into the striking. Uh, and it's such a difference. And I think, you know, guys like George St. Pierre, to, to name one, Kamar Usman, who was at Sanford, uh, Habib a little bit, but he was more grappling. You don't see many guys that have both those attributes. And I'm looking to be the next generation of fighter to have both those attributes and be world class in, in both. Well, man, Sanford has a, a long list, man. Michael Chandler, Gilbert Burns, guys that have grappling backgrounds went over there, turned into phenomenal Herbert, strikers. Sleep on that dude. Who? Because Herbert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gilbert's cousin or brother, man. He's yeah. got hands. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, and he's very experienced too himself, man. He fought in Asia for a long time. Uh, you're two and zero as a pro. Did you have an amateur career? Nope, trained for four months MMA and then my first pro fight. What What was behind the decision to just go straight pro? I didn't have any time to waste, man. I'm looking. I'm looking to become the best. I'm looking to do it quick. I'm not looking to get rushed, but I know uh, when I test myself, I rise to the occasion. So we're strategically placing the tests to where it's right there. So it garners my interest, uh, keeps me excited, but. Gives me a little adversity, but I'm still able to, to conquer it, man. If if I told you the thinking that goes into to this between me and my team, it's like it's like the scientists and doctors, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. There there's a formula, man, that you have to put together. You're right, it's like scientists and doctors. Um you, you mentioned it earlier that you went from the Goat Shed Academy to Sanford and you didn't make the move alone, which makes it a lot easier to transition, right? It, was it was it a lot easier because you had a few people with you? Yeah, man. I I don't know if I I would have made the change um, if I didn't if those guys didn't go. So at Goat Shed, uh, I've been friends with Awesome, who's the head coach at Goat Shed for years. He I met him at Hendo Gracie Academy, and then he opened up a gym in Miami, and then I said, you know what? It's a good starter gym. I think that. Uh, you should probably start at a small gym when you're first starting your career because attention and resources um, equal development. So I would get more attention and resources there, uh, being a smaller gym and having more one-on-one -on -one attention. Uh, and then a guy named Dieter Navarro came into the gym. And me, I'm the type of guy where I know my athletic capabilities, I know my talent, I know my intellect. Uh, the main thing with me is being happy and uh, doing the right things. Um, and when I'm living a righteous life and I'm happy, uh, I don't think that I'm going to lose. I think I'm going to continue to win. So those were the two key elements that I look for when I'm uh, either adding someone to my team or looking to make a decision uh, towards my career, future, love life, family, really whatever. And uh, Dieter came in and we really just clicked. Uh, we had a really good relationship. We had really good trust in each other. Uh, I think he guides me the right way. And so does Jerry. And uh, to be honest, like I make 
I, obviously I ultimately like I make my own decisions, but I have like the right people that kind of break down the analytics of what I should and, and shouldn't do. And I put my trust in, into them to, to give me counsel and, uh, and yeah, they said it was the right time to go and the right move, and it was a perfect transition. You know, me, Landry Ward, uh, Angel Alvarez, and then my coach Dieter, who I spent ninety percent of my time with at Goat Shed, was leaving anyway. So it was just the right move. And especially as I'm developing my career, my first year I wasn't an amazing fighter, like technically, right? Uh, but now I got that technique in those 12 to 14 months. So now it's time to put in a different method of training, which is a lot more hard grinding, a lot more sparring, a lot more focus on smaller positions rather than a lot of technique, you know, elbows in, knowing when to recoil, knowing how to recover, just just focusing on more minute details than, than grand details and then applying them in a practical sense against high-level athletes, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, as a rising prospect in the game, you know, you have to be very selective of your surroundings. People want to give their input all the time, man. It could be family. It could be friends. It could be teammates, coaches. You know, how do you separate, like, the the negativity? Because there's always haters, you know. Even in your closest circles, there possibly could be and or from the constructive criticism. Yeah, there's a lot, man. And you kind of got to know how to play the game. That's really all it comes down to. Uh I have a system where, okay, this person in my life, um, I listen to you for this advice and anything else that you say, I'll listen to you and I'll be respectful and, you know, I'll even say, okay, thank you. Like, oh, I get what you're saying, but like, don't really listen to them. And then one person, another person, like a coach could tell me something technically and I listen to everything that they're saying. So I kind of have uh, built-in filters that I use to listen to some people and don't listen to other people. The other thing is uh, fans and haters, you know, that's just like, that's just part of it. So people are going to hate and then I'm just going to say, okay, like you're just a confused fan, you know, <laughs> and there, there are there are a lot of haters, but that just means I'm doing something right, man. This fight, man, how do you see yourself extending the win streak against Russell? I'm going to knock this boy out on the feet. Yeah, I'm going to get my first clean knockout. My first one was a UD. My second one was a TKO. Uh, obviously, I pulled my ace in the hole with the wrestling, but this next one, man, I'm going to hit him with a little overhand, I think. That don't work. Maybe a little liver kick. Close that distance, close that distance, close that distance. That don't work. I'm, I'm going to put him in the ground and pound. You know, I kind of have a systematic approach to, to how I'm going to start breaking these guys down and, and applying my tactics. All right. Um... March 4th, new date, Titan FC 74. Richie, appreciate the time, man. Good luck on the rest of the camp and in the fight. Thanks, man. I appreciate your time.